Bruce the accounting guy here today, and today we're talking again on plant property and equipment, but we're really on the second half of the chapter, which is the disposal of plant property and equipment. We're going to go over examples for a vehicle that we're going to remove. Really, we can remove that vehicle three different ways. We can junk it, we can sell it, and of course we can trade it in. But before we deal with that, we need to understand the numbers on that vehicle, and that's what it's cost us for that vehicle and how much of it we've depreciated to date. Going to our chart up here, we can see that we have a vehicle that had $13,000 worth of cost and accumulated depreciation of five. Now, of course, if it has accumulated depreciation of $5,000, that means that to date we have taken that much out as depreciation expense. Looking up here on top of this chart, you can see that I've set up T accounts for the vehicles and T accounts for accumulated depreciation and that in reality, we have $200,000 worth of vehicles, but one of the vehicles that we have makes up $13,000 of this. Coming over to the accumulated depreciation side, we have $45,000 worth of depreciation, but out of that, one of the vehicles has $5,000 worth of depreciation to date. So coming back down to this little, little this sets of numbers here, again, if its cost is 13 and we subtract out its accumulated depreciation, that means it has a book value of $8,000. Now, what's book value? Again, going back to an earlier chapter in the text, book value is how much of the original cost, which is 13, we have not expensed out. And again, book value has nothing to do with what the asset's really worth. It just says out of the original cost, which in this case was 13, we still haven't expensed out that $8,000. And whatever we can get for that, Really, in essence, whatever we can get for that vehicle, if we can get more than $8,000, we'll have a gain. And if we get less than $8,000, we have a loss. And, of course, if we got exactly $8,000, we would come up even. But, again, this has nothing to do with fair market value, only the original cost we have left. So, really, in reality, if we're going to get rid of this piece of equipment, regardless if we junk it, we sell it, or we trade it in, we have to remove it which means we'd have to remove these two dollar amounts here, the 13 and the 5 from the vehicles, 13 from the vehicles, and 5 from accumulated depreciation. And, that, and, this, and, and, and again, what that means then is, is, is that this opening entry would happen here. If we come down to this opening entry here, you can see I have a debit to accumulated depreciation and a credit to vehicle. And, and now, again, this is not an entire journal entry because if you recall, journal entries are always equal. This journal entry is not equal at all. But this is the opening part of our entry to show that when we debit $5,000 out of accumulated and credit the, out of the vehicle, 13, we've removed it from the two accounts above that I showed you. And that's what we have to do because the actual asset is now what? Gone. So, again, that is very important to, to recognize. Now, when we remove an item, regardless if we junk it, sell it, trade it in, there are four steps that I've given you to successfully remove your assets. And I call them my four steps to, to um, successful asset removal. They're all the way up over here. And on your next exam, I will have them written down for you. Those four steps, which we will see throughout this process, are one, remove the old asset. Two, record cash in or out. When cash comes in, it's a debit, so I have in on the left side. When you pay, if you pay cash out, it's a credit. I have the out on the right. So I'm helping you remember if it's a debit or a credit. So remove the old asset, record the cash in or out. Three, record the new asset in at its fair market value, which we'll always have. And four, you'll just balance the entry with a loss or gain, as we're going to see in a few minutes. So following those four steps, let's apply them to this particular vehicle here that had a cost of 13 and accumulated a 5, and let's junk it, which means when we get rid of it, we get nothing. So if we use the first step, which is remove the old asset, there it is. That's the removal of the asset. Notice that we'll do that regardless if we junk it, sell it, trade it in, and what you've done is you've taken it off the books, and you've put your entry out of balance at that point in time, as you can see, by $8,000. The book value, okay? The next step is to record cash in or out. And, of course, in this set of entries, there is no cash because we're junking it. So, therefore, we just simply skip that entry. Re entry th Step three would be record the new asset at 
fair market value. We aren't getting a new asset. We're junking this, so we can skip that step. And the fourth one, fourth one is to balance the entry with a loss or gain. When we look at this entry at this point in time, we can see that the debits are only 5,000 and the credit is 13, so we need a debit of 8,000. And it's no surprise that that debit represents the book value of the asset. And so what we'll do is we'll balance that entry. And we balance that entry so that we have 13 as debits and 13 as credits. We call that a loss on disposal. Now, if you can't remember if it's a gain or loss, I've done that for you in these four steps. Balance the entry, loss slash gain. Losses on the left, they're debits. That's why I have the loss here. And if you needed to make a credit, it would be a gain. And we'll see that we're going to use all of this as we go through these entries. So this is how you junk it. Now, a couple of things. I'm showing you this in steps. If I asked you to record the journal entry to junk it, I would not want to see this down here at all. This is not part of the actual, this is not part of the entry. This was just a process to get you there. This is the actual journal entry I would expect to see because my debits are first, next to the margin, I've indented for my credit, and my cre debits again, total 13, just like the credit. This is not a journal entry. This was just a process to move you to here. That's a loss. Let's take a look at gains, I mean on sales. And again, we'll use these four steps. The first one will be a sale at $10,000. Now, if I go back to the book value of the asset, the book value was eight. So if the book value is eight, I know if I get more, it's a gain, and if I get less, it's a loss. So if I said the book value is 8 and it's a sale of 10, you know you've lost, you've gained 2, but let's see how it works. Follow the steps. Step 1, remove the old asset. Here it is. There's the removal of the old asset. And again, I want to remind you that I've also sent you a handout which also has all of this stuff on it. So hopefully you have that in front of you and you can take notes. There's the removal of the old asset. Again, I've removed all the accumulated depreciation and I've removed the vehicle. I'm out of balance again by the book value at that point in time. Step two says record cash in or out. You have cash coming in. Cash in's on the left. It's a debit and it's $10,000. So there's step two, record the cash in. Cash a debit of 10,000, accumulated depreciation of five. So now I'm sitting with a 15 and a 13. Step three says to record the new, the new asset in a fair market value. We only run into step three if we have a trade-in. We aren't trading something in, we're selling. We're just selling it. So we'd skip that step. And step four says balance the entry with a loss on the left, a gain on the right. I can see that I'm out of balance by 15 to 13, so I know I need $2,000. And when I add that $2,000, here it is. It's going to be a gain on sale. Again, this is the finished product. This is the journal entry that I would want, not these. These are just showing you the process to get to here, the thought process. Now, again, notice that really the book value of the asset, that's the difference between these two, is $8,000. We got 10. We received 2,000 more. That's why we had a gain. Okay? That is if we sold it for 10. And again, let's do it one more time and see what happens when we sell it for a loss. So when we sell it for a loss, let's sell it for 4. Now again, real quick, if the book value is 8 and we only sell it for 4, we have a loss of 4. But let's see how that number just pops right up at us following the steps. Step 1, remove the old asset. There's the step 1 right there. The removal of the old asset is right here. We removed all the accumulated depreciation and the original value. Same entry every single time for all three things we've done. When we jumped it, sold it at 10 and sold it at 4, there's our entry. That's step one. Step two, record your cash in or out. Cash in. So I'm going to debit because it's cash in. It's on the left. There's the $4,000 coming in. And now I have the cash and the removal of the old asset. Step three is to record the new asset in a fair market value. We don't have one, so we go to step four, which is balance the entry. I can look at this thing and see, well, here's nine, here's 13. I need $4,000 on this side. And now that's my, here's the final product with the adding of the four, and there's my loss on sale. You do have to know how to do these journal entries. Um, I did give you a, 
a uh, attachment to one of the emails I've sent out, which is the exact same thing I have up here, so that you don't have to copy it all down. You can just take notes on it. So the only thing we have left to do is a trade-in, and we'll do that next time. So for now, Bruce the accounting guy saying, have a good one.